Good afternoon. This is Dr. Chris from Dinette Family Chiropractic. We are still in January, so with this month comes resolutions on eating healthier and losing weight. There are many food products out there marketed toward weight loss. Look at any packaging and you will see a low fat, low carb, or low sodium option. But here's another idea. Instead of focusing on what's on the front of the package, which is basically advertising and marketing, we're going to be smart and focus on the ingredients label. If you're serious about becoming a healthier person, the number one thing you should avoid is sugar. But I like sugar, it tastes fantastic. I know, uh, which is why we're gonna be digging into this topic a little bit more. In fact, this topic is so big, we're gonna divide this into two videos. This week we're gonna be talking about the problem and next week we're going to be talking about the solution. The information I'm gonna share from you is from the work of Dr. Robert Lustig. Dr. Lustig is a professor of pediatrics in the Division of Endocrinology at the University of California in San Francisco. He's one of the leading experts on childhood obesity. I'm actually gonna put a link to one of his lectures in the comments section below so you can check him out. So let's talk about sugar. When we talk about sugar, I'm talking about all sugars not only the teaspoon of sugar that you put in your coffee and your tea every morning, but also the corn-based sweeteners like high fructose corn syrup and honey and agave, all sugars. Years ago, people blamed fat for the rising rates in heart disease, obesity, and diabetes. So a bunch of fat-free products entered the marketplace. Well, when you take out the fat, you also take out a lot of the flavor. So in order to make these new products palatable and taste good so people would buy them, the companies added a lot of sugar to them. Well, instead of the obesity and diabetes rates going down, they actually skyrocketed to where they are today. The average person today consumes a third of a pound of sugar or 150 grams a day, half of which is fructose, which is the big bad of this whole, um, this whole epidemic. Sugar today can be found in basically any and all processed food products. Um, from your fruit juice and your soda, which is where a lot of people expect it to be, but also it's in your ketchup, it's in your Worcestershire sauce, it's even in your peanut butter. Um, the Oscar Mayer Lunchables that many parents send their kids to school with every day contain 36 grams of sugar. To put that in perspective, a Krispy Kreme glazed donut has 10 grams of sugar. So kids are consuming three and a half Krispy Kreme donuts worth of sugar for lunch every single day. Do you see why we have a problem here? So what does fructose and sugar do for the body? Fructose elevates uric acid in the body. So what does that mean? What uric acid does is it decreases nitric oxide in the body and it raises angiotensin. Angiotensin is a hormone that causes the smooth muscle cells in your body to contract. The smooth muscle cells are in your GI tract, they're in your respiratory tract, and they're in your blood vessels. So what the, when these blood vessels contract, it raises your blood pressure, and it also is gonna stress out your kidneys. So over the long term, when you are constantly consuming sugars day after day, you are chronically inflaming these blood vessels. Eating sugar leads to chronic inflammation. Chronically inflamed blood vessels can lead to heart attacks and they can lead to strokes. And there's also evidence that chronic inflammation plays a major role in cancer formation. So not only is fructose doing this in your body, it's also leading to insulin resistance. Fructose doesn't properly stimulate the release of insulin, which in turn doesn't stimulate leptin which is the hormone that tells your body that you are full. So you end up eating more and you end up eating more of the bad, of the bad things, things that have even more sugar in it. This leads to weight gain, it leads to abdominal obesity, a decrease in HDLs, which is the good fats, an increase in LDLs, which is the bad fats, increased triglycerides, elevated blood sugar, and as we talked about, high blood pressure. The worst part about sugar is that it's also very addicting. It is just as addicting as cocaine or alcohol. Right now, for the first time in history, 
lifestyle diseases are killing people faster than communicable diseases like polio. These, are, these, these lifestyle diseases are your diabetes, your heart disease, and your cancers. An article in the New York Times cited a study of 300,000 men and women in 52 countries, and it showed that at least 90% of the heart disease that was found was lifestyle related, meaning it's what you eat and how you move that is either killing you or is making us, health, is making us healthier more often now than the diseases that used to be killing us in the past. This is actually good news. It means that we have complete control over our health. So next week, we're going to look at some strategies on decreasing our sugar intake. So comment below. Have you tried cutting sugar out from your diet? It is very, very hard to do. And do you have any tips or tricks for the rest of us who haven't done that yet? As always, we are here to help you and your family live a healthier life. This is Dr. Chris from Danette Pilly Chiropractic in Easton, Massachusetts. Have a wonderful rest of your week.